Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have had a long in and uh, intensive day, and we are now approaching the final session. We are starting a few minutes ahead. We have checked. We believe most people are here. And the first session will bring insight into new initiatives at KTH, what are happening at KTH. And our first speaker is Rajiv Tuta Pilil, uh, professor from Energy Systems. And uh, in particular, you will inform us about the new energy platform at KTH and this new exciting initiative, Inno Energy. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, I'll be talking about energy platform and inno energy. Uh, both of them are somewhat unrelated. The platforms are more internal to KTH, whereas inno energy is a European wide consortium. Uh, there are five energy platforms that was started quite recently within KTH and energy is one of them. The idea behind the platform is that if you take energy, it can be electrical energy, chemical energy, heat energy, or any different types of energy. So they are, the research and education on it is conducted at many different schools within KTH, and they are kind of fragmented. So if you come from outside and look at, okay, what is the energy research in KTH, it is almost impossible to find out. So the initiative of the platform is to, to try to bring together everything under one umbrella. So you have one entry point, and from there you can find out all different aspects of energy. And it is quite new, so it is not, uh, I, I wouldn't say that it is uh, fully developed yet, but it has got a lot of possibilities. Now, as I mentioned, the platforms are owned by KTH and internally driven. Whereas Inno Energy is a knowledge and innovation community, or called KIC, in sustainable energy. And it is selected by European Institute for Innovation Technology, or EIT. EIT is something new, it started last year only. Uh, the reason for establishing EIT is that uh, uh, in Europe there is a lot of investment on research and development, but in terms of patents and new companies, we are behind the United States. So, in, uh, this European Institute of uh, Innovation and Technology is trying to bridge this gap, and they uh, initiated calls for three different kicks. One on uh, sustainable energy, on ICT, and on climate change. And several consortiums within Europe were competing. And the consortium that won is Inno Energy. And KTH is part of that consortium. And later, uh, Kalle will be talking about another uh, such consortium. And Inno Energy is led by the energy platform. So these are the five energy platforms. Materials, Science for Life, ICT, Energy and Transportation. And to give you an example of the various areas are presented by energy platform, uh, they are listed over there, starting from batteries, biomass, in alphabetical order, all the way to wind power. So it is... Uh, it covers most of the areas within energy, and it is coordinated by uh, Professor Ramon Wiss. Now I come to kick Inno Energy. This is the symbol that we use. Now it will bring innovation into the whole energy mix 
coherent with uh, the set plan of the European Union. Uh, now, there are six nodes within this uh, knowledge and innovation community, and each node has got their own speciality. That is, they are responsible for coordinating certain areas within energy. Now, as you can see that uh, these nodes are, one is Sweden, Poland, Germany, Alps Valley, situated in Grenoble, uh, Spain, that is Iberia, and uh, Belgium and Netherlands, Benelux. Now, if you take Sweden, we are responsible for European smart electric grid and electric storage. That is what uh, the thematic area, and that is what we have to coordinate. And this includes uh, research, uh, innovation, as well as education in, in this area. Uh, similarly, other co-location centers has got other topics like clean coal, energy from chemical fuels, sustainable nuclear and renewable energy, uh, renewables like wind, photovoltaic, etc., intelligent buildings. Now, even though these topics are situated in different nodes, there, is, there are cross connections. They are not working in isolation. And we try to bring innovation, research and technology, and education together. So all these three are aspects of the same issue. Now, if you look at uh, the kind of project structures, first we have the kick shareholders. There are 36 shareholders within that, which includes 13 universities, uh, 15 companies, and some research institutes all together. And these shareholders, there will be a CEO later elected, I mean appointed, and each node also will be having a management team with a node manager. So it is almost run like a company. And the kick is responsible for thematic coordination. Then there are certain number of projects that you can see over here, thematic projects. And cutting across that, you have something called uh, Lighthouse in our drivers. And they are driven by certain partners within this uh, kick. So this is the general structure of uh, the projects, as well as education. Now, the difference uh, with EIT is that the kicks should be stakeholder-owned and driven, which is true because it is the 35 partners that are owners of the kick. It has a business-style management for efficiency, impact, and speed. Only 25% of the funding come from EIT, and the rest has to come from the partners themselves, because they have a stake in the issues, from other EU instruments like FP7, from national funding agencies, and private sources. And there is a co-location of education, research, business, and innovation. Uh, to give an example, if you take a, a Swedish uh, node, the main partners are KTH, Uppsala University, ABB, and Vattenfall. And there are several associate partners like Fortum, Elforsk, uh, and uh, uh, SPCO, and several other companies. So all of them meet together regularly. Uh, and decide upon things. So there is already this interaction happening. Now, the success of the kick is measured not in the normal university terms. If you look at all these uh, key performance indicators, you will recognize the top one and the bottom one as uh, typically university business. That is, uh, students as well as scientific publications. But that is not enough. The number of new products and services launched into the market 
startups per year, number of European patents, patents transferred to SMEs. So these are the, the key performance indicators by which European Union will judge in no energy. To, to give an example for funding, there are three kicks uh, and total funding of 119. So roughly per kick, when it is fully operational by 2013, there will be 40 million euro, that is the total funding. And per co-allocation, uh, 5 million. And then you have partner funding, uh, which will be another 10 million. And national co-funding uh, from other agencies, 5. So total budget of Inno Energy this year is 6 million euro, and by 2013, it will be 20 million. And the lifetime is uh, totally 14 years. Uh, and of course, it is expected that it will last even beyond that. Seven years, after seven years, there will be an evaluation. Now, within smart grids and electric storage, for which uh, Sweden is responsible for coordination, uh, this year, we have started mainly the technologies and system, the core part, smart power systems, smart grids, and electric storage, for, and smart grid materials. So we started four, four projects. Uh, but these uh, projects will be catering to evolution of existing assets into smart grid, energy market design, and customer interaction, as well as major smart grid demonstrations. The Royal Seaport that you saw earlier could be part of the smart grid demonstration projects. So these are the four you know, energy projects within Sweden that is starting this year. Controllable and intelligent power components, smart grids from power producers to consumers, electric storage, and material technology. Now, there is an education part. In this year, uh, we are launching a PhD school in smart electricity grid and storage, and already we have received more than 150 applications. And there will be something like 15 to 20 positions within that this year. And these PhD positions are all, the, all together in the six nodes, and there will be meeting together and there is a compulsory six months mobility to another node. So it is very different from the normal type of PhD programs in a university. Next year, there'll be a master's program on the same topic. And already, there is a master's program on sustainable energy starting this year. I will stop with that and leave the floor. Thank you very much, Ramim. Uh, I think it might be suitable to continue directly with the next talk because we have a, a similar presentations but on the topic of information and communication technologies. And then we can take questions uh, for both KTH representatives.